Hello, this is Jimmy, WX9DX, and welcome to my build of the MHA941 EK antenna tuner. Here I'm using a 30 watt iron with 6337 eutectic solder. It has one degree of plastic range, melts about half the temperature of regular 6040 solder. We're looking at page 7 and 8 of the manual. Installing those parts. Notice I'm using a pair of plush cutters. They come with a pair of needle nose from Walmart. You can get them from Radio Shack, different other places. The pair of plush cutting uh, nippers like these is what you want to use. You always want to go back and check all your work through this whole build. Here they want you to take and put a jumper across C where C12 uh, is in a circuit board. Uh, they don't install an actual component C12. They put this jumper in there because this circuit board is used on several different antenna tuners. This is L2. It has no polarity, so you can put it in the board either way. Pay attention, please, to the way uh, I grab the leads here momentarily with the needle nose. Here we're installing D1 and 2. They've got a black band on one end. It has to be oriented in a certain direction. Uh, read the manual. You'll figure out which way it is. Or take a quick look and uh, pause my video here. You'll see which way it goes. Here we're installing S1. Again, just like all the other components, the switches have to be absolutely flush with the board. Or they may... Uh, not work properly going through the holes in the front of the housing later on. S1 uh, runs the uh, lamp in the meter. And you'll see I push quite hard on this switch. This is the 30 slash 300 watt switch. Making sure it's absolutely flush and then soldering it in place. Now we install the power jack. We don't just push it through and solder it. Push it through and bend over the leads because it's going to have a little bit of physical abuse from that power plug being run in and out of there. So by bending the leads, we give it a little bit of added strength in the board. Then the colored wires are all the same length. And at this point, all we're doing is installing them in the board. The three black ones go right next to each other into the land pattern that is ground. I solder those down. And if there's any extra little bit of wire sticking out, we nip it off with the flush cutters. Here when looking at the instructions I decided to uh, delay the installing of the antenna switch so later on I installed all the wires and also the bare bus wires. I felt that that was better than having that switch on there and the board kind of rocking back and forth as I was trying to install things. Here you see I put a little bit of a bend in the wire before I put the rivet on there, that little brass rivet. Make a little bit of judgment here and then bend that wire. And you notice that 
I kind of care about the orientation of that little piece of wire. It's going to be RF flowing through there, high power radio frequency. They're doing one at arcing over because there's a sharp point facing towards a ground land pattern. You notice here the toroid has a little Teflon uh, shoulder washer or a rivet that, that keeps it centered on that wire. The twisted pair goes in the center hole and the other two wires come off that toroid going each side there, one in one hole, one in the other hole on each side. Now here I try to use a, a pair of just regular nippers and you know it's right away I go back to the flush cutters so that I get a nice clean job and then you want to brush away any leavings so that your work is not laying there in the in just little pieces of wire that could stick to the board. Here we slide the switch down that piece of wire, one of the tabs on that switch, bending that wire and pushing that switch in the holes of the board, and then bending the wire a little bit more, very carefully, so we don't break that switch. Hold the switch down, and then we bend that piece of wire uh, very gently so we don't break that tab. And then, Holding the switch down, we flip the board over, do something very special. Uh, when we heat the solder, keep the solder liquid, hold the board down with the solder still liquid, and then move the soldering iron away, letting the solder cool before we let go of the board. Heat that solder up. Hold the board down, then pull the iron away, and then let the solder cool before we ever move our hands. Here you see I've cut the excess off of that wire that ran through the tab. If the board looks like this, most likely it's going to work. You see the orientation of the diodes and the band on the diodes here. Thank you for watching. This is Jimmy Carey, WX9DX, 73.